Hi everyone. In this month's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a little depth to a scene such as this, where I've got a few modeled buildings in a perspective shot, uh, where I want these backgrounds to look as though they're a little bit more distant than our foreground assets. Now, uh, the way I'm going to achieve this is by adding a couple of modifiers to the freestyle pass. Uh, if you take a look down here in my compositor, I've just got set up the generic inking compositor, which takes a shadow pass and combines it with a freestyle pass, um, as you can see here in my render layers properties panel. I've got my two uh, layers here and combines it to give us this effect. So if we go to our line work layer, let's just collapse the layers here and uh, we don't need the passes window open. Uh, we want to take a look at our freestyle sets. I've got my main line set, which is giving us these lovely thick lines and my crease line set, which is set to a slightly thinner thickness. Uh, if you take a look at the, the main line set, th the base thickness is set to one and the crease line set is set to 0.5. Um, I like to do this because the crease lines give us this sort of added texture. Um, it, you know, most inkers, what they do is they do our nice thick outlines for the, for the main features and then sort of thinner lines uh, for, for details. Uh, in this case, I've got these windows here as, as details. By selecting the line set, the main line set first, uh, you can see here that I've, uh, under edge types, I've included silhouette, border, and contour. In my kind of Boolean operation here, I've got crease and external contours ticked. Under freestyle line style, I'm gonna add a modifier to the thickness. So under add modifier, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select distance from camera, which we've looked at before. Uh, let's scroll down here to take a look. Uh, you can see that the defaults, are uh, we've got our blend type to mix. What this does is it blends this modifier with the base thickness and it sets it to one of these options, center, inside, outside, or relative. I'm just going to set it to center for now. The type of mapping of this distance from camera, so if we were to map it across a curve, we could have linear or curved uh, so that the distance could fall off at an inverse square if we wanted to, but we're going to leave it at linear for now. We've got a range set between 0 and 1,000 and we've got a minimum and maximum value set at zero and one. I'm going to select all by hitting A. Now, if you've got anything selected, just hit A again uh, to select all. And where it says fill range by selection, I can click on that to give us this estimate. Now, this is going to be pretty much 35 units in depth, and that is from this object all the way to this back object. If I was to go into top view here, you'd see that all of these objects including the sun here, uh, counted in this calculation. So if we were to say, take these grids as 10 units each, we've got 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, wondering why it's giving us a, oh, it's about 36 with this sort of minimum range of one on the other side. Uh, so what I wanna do is really just count from the camera and so this gives us one, two, three, 30, uh, 32-ish. So I'm gonna set my range to, from zero to 30. I'm gonna round that off. And this basically caps any of this minimum value, or in this case, the maximum value, at 30 units away from the camera. Uh, I'm gonna do one other thing, and I'm going to click inverse on this. The reason being is that the max range uh, sort of corresponds to the value max, and so we're going to actually get our thicker lines at the 30 unit mark, and so we're going to get sort of like, if we don't invert this, it's going to actually be thinner lines closer to the camera and thicker at the, uh, the further away we get. We don't want that, so we're going to invert that. I'm now going to set that to multiply, but I'm going to set my value max to something thicker than our base thickness of one. So I'm gonna set that to two. And so if we take a look at our uh, modifier now, what this is telling us is that it's going to judge the line thickness based on distance from camera. 
It's going to multiply our result with the base, thick base thickness. It's got a minimum range of zero, which is about where the camera's sitting, and a maximum range of 30 units away from the camera, because this is distance from camera, and it's going to drop it off in a linear fashion. So we're going to do the same with the crease line using exactly the same settings, modify from camera, multiply, linear, invert, range, 30. But our value max, because our thickness is thinner here, I'm going to set this slightly above to maybe 0.6, uh, leaving everything else the same. So now when we do another re-render, you'll already notice, if you sort of have a keen eye, that the lines at the back are now much thinner than the lines in the foreground. And to illustrate this a little bit more clearly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get another node here. Uh, this is sort of optional. I'm just setting this to multiply. And I'm going to set my line work to the second uh, node here. And I'm going to shift A, uh, grab an input here, and a bump. This is an RGB input. I'm going to set that to white. And that's going to be my first image input here. And I'm going to click on including the alpha of the second operation. Now, what I've just basically done is I've created a color node and I'm overlaying or multiplying the uh, freestyle line work over this color node to illustrate just my ink work. We've got lovely thick lines up the front and right when we get to the back, it's almost disappeared, which is fine for our purposes, I guess. Uh, but this sort of gives us this linear drop off in line thickness, which is what we're really after. Now let's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave this here for now because I'm gonna show you another modifier that we can add to further emphasize this depth just on the line work. And it won't be on thickness. In this case, I'm gonna go back to my line set, freestyle line set, and I'm going to, under freestyle line style, click on color. Again, I'm gonna add a distance from camera modifier and we know a few things that we have to do, and that is our range, zero to max, uh, should be set to 30. But look at what we've got here. We actually have a gradient, um, an RGB gradient, which is just fine. It's set to linear. With, uh, at position one, we've got black, and position two, we've got white. And what we're going to do here is use this color range to color the line work from black to white. Now, if we basically just went ahead and re-rendered this with just the range max set to 30, you can see exactly what's going to happen. And that is that it's going to uh, change the coloring of the line work based on its distance from camera from a very dark black here to an almost white over here. You can already see how it's sort of grayed out here. And it's uh, use the mix operation. I'm going to set that to multiply. Um, but what I want to do is actually change the interpolation to something that gives us a little bit more black here. And I'm not really wanting it to go straight to white. So I'm going to see this is position zero, this is position one, and I can click on that white. And I click there and I can drop this down to maybe a point six on everything, so it's actually a little bit grayer than white. It's not a full white. Um, I can also grab this uh, position zero, and I can grab that by clicking and dragging. I'm gonna drag this up in the position, so more of this image is gonna remain black before it quickly fades off to that uh, gradient. Now you'll notice that this is only on the line set here. So I'm gonna set this to a very specific position, point two, and I might leave this uh, lighter one right at the end. So we've got ease, we've uh, basically set our uh, first color on the ramp to position uh, 230 over here. And let's do another quick re-render. And you can see that we've gotten a lot of that black back and that sort of gray there. Now, if you really wanna see that effect, I'm just gonna go back over to my line work here. Uh, I can see that it's really not affected it much on its multiply, so I might set that back to mix. And now you can see how under mix it, it is much more uh, prominent. Uh, we've got these lovely black lines here and just because we've got the line set, it's sort of rendering them in, in this sort of like more a lighter gray. So we went back to composite, you can sort of see how that's fading out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put this modifier back on crease lines here as well. So taking a look uh, carefully, what have we got here? We need to go color, distance from camera, set that to 30, set this position to 0.23, uh, and we want to get the same color here on position that. So on the hex, just copy that. Paste that. So we've basically got exactly the same, and we're going to set that to ease. And now it's affecting both line sets, and I'm really happy with that effect. Now, if you were just going to do the inks, this is probably where you'd stop. Uh, so let's take a look at how that combines with the shadow pass. Now you can sort of see already how it's really been affected. Uh, it's, it's changed quite a bit from our previous render. Uh, but what about these shadows? How do we affect uh, what's going on here uh, to sort of begin to sort of blur out and make the shadows look a little bit more washed out the deeper we get into this picture? And that's where we have to go back to our shading pass. Uh, so let's take a look at our passes and I'm going to enable what is called a mist pass. Now before we go ahead and re-render those uh, shadows, I'm going to go over to my World Properties tab where we can enable some mist settings. Now by ticking this, uh, there's one caveat to enabling mist and that is that it affects the alpha channel of the, uh, the final image of, of this particular layer. So if we were to take a look at this image, uh, you can see that uh, our alpha is this white on black. Now, when we re-render that, that mist will actually etch away at that. That's how the mist pass is actually uh, created. But for our purposes to begin with, we're going to change some of these uh, parameters. Now, what I found works best, first off, we need our depth of 30. I'm going to put the start at point one, and I'm going to set the fall off to linear. Uh, and now I'm going to do another render on just that pass. And if we went to our shading layer, you can already see how it's affected uh, the, the alpha, the overall alpha here, All right? Um, but if we were to take a look at the mist, you can see what the mist is doing. It's sort of given us this depth map with uh, very white, uh, sort of brighter areas in the foreground, and the further we go down, the darker they get. If we were to go to the combined shading pass, and take a look at our, our alpha channel, you can see that it's sort of making some of the image transparent. Once we've got those mist parameters entered, we can untick that box. So when we do another render with our mist pass enabled, you can now see that if we looked at our shading layer, uh, the combined is no longer etched away by that mist, but we still have our mist pass uh, working in there. So we've sort of got the best of both worlds. Now we can apply this over the entire image simply by, if I just go Shift A, Color, Mix, I'll get a Mix node in there, and I'm going to bring in my Mist Pass over the top, and I'm going to set my operation to Subtract. Uh, what this is doing is it's doing the reverse of what's going on with the mist pass. As you can see here, our mist pass is actually very bright over here in the foreground and darker in the background. But in nature, when we look out our window or we look through distance, there's more air between us and the background. And so we really need the reverse of this to happen. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Of course, we could get an invert uh, by going Shift A, Invert put that on the mist pass before we hit like multiply. And that gives us the same effect, darkening the foreground, brightening up the background. Uh, but this is an extra step. So what we really wanna do is just go mist pass, let's get rid of that. And if we just hit subtract, it does exactly the same thing. And this way we can actually control the factor by which it is applied. And so if we want just a little bit of variance, uh, we can sort of bring that factor back. Or oh, if we want a lot of that and darken up that foreground, uh, but we sort of tend to lose a little bit of this definition. So we find that our happy medium here is about 550. Um, this is beginning to work. 
Pardon the interruption, but did you know that supporting me on Patreon for just a few dollars a month gives you access to ad-free versions of these tutorials as well as the accompanying working files, templates, set libraries, and more? Your ongoing support allows me to keep creating quality content and to share it with a wider creative community. So click on the link below and check it out today. But for now, let's get back to the tutorial. Now one last thing, and the reason why I wanted that clean alpha is because now what if we wanted to bring in something like a sky? Uh, we'd need an alpha over, so if we went shift A, color, alpha over, we can bring that down to this line here, and this would have to be our second operation. What do we want to alpha over? And so I'm going to use my RGB, I'm going to get rid of this multiply here, I'm going to bring my RGB node over here. Uh, this is just a white background, and I'm going to place this over here. Still, we see nothing because we need to give it an alpha channel. So from our shading layer, we can grab that alpha to act as the factor. And now we've got the combined image with a white background uh, that we can control. If we want it a little bit darker, we can just grab this level over here and say darken up that sky or brighten it up or even change the color of it if we wanted to. Uh, we've got this mist pass which we can control uh, to get this, this sort of beautiful depth going. And this now has a combination of what we did with our line work uh, combined with a mist pass over everything to give us this sort of depth over the color um, to give us this more, sort of, this slight gradient, sort of like really showing up here on these buildings, which is very beautiful. Uh, based all on the information that we are getting from the 3D model. And so this image, this sort of final image here, I'm just going to drop that back a little because we really want that line work to show. Let's go 450. Uh, it gives us sort of that best of both worlds and I quite like what it's doing. Now, of course, you can go ahead and tweak a lot of those settings that we looked at, like the line work, um, say our, our color fill here or our distance from camera on the thickness uh, or what, what have you uh, and really go to town and finesse this up um, but for the purposes of this demonstration this is pretty much where I, I think it should sit um, and so that is one or a couple of ways to add depth to your renders uh, when you're rendering uh, comic illustrations out of Blender. Now both files called Freestyle Tutorial as well as Freestyle Finished are available on the Patreon post that accompanies this video. So if you're watching this on Patreon, go ahead and download both uh, and they're free for you to study and dissect and of course use the assets that are available to you. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Bye for now.